CCR TV, channel of God's love. A warm welcome to all our viewers on this episode of In Conversation With. Healthy eating and healthy living takes priority over all other essential things in today's world. Today more and more people are becoming health conscious and are concerned about what they eat, how much they eat and how they can maintain their fitness levels and body immunity. You have probably heard or seen microgreens before. Microgreens are now an integral part of healthy diet plan of health conscious people and they surely are the chef's favorite vegetable confetti. What exactly are microgreens and what is all the fuss about them? What are their health benefits? Can we cultivate microgreens for our domestic consumption in our kitchen garden? In this episode, we bring to you answers to all these questions and much more information on these tiny, miniature and beautiful greens and all that you always wanted to know about them. We have with us in our studios today, Nikhil Srinivasan, the young generation self-made entrepreneur and chief executive officer of Tridente Modern Farms Private Limited. Welcome to the studios, Mr. Nikhil Srinivasan. Thank you so much, sir. It's we are happy to, to have you here and to discuss on some hot topic of microgreens. Likewise, sir. Nikhil, I know briefly that you were in the teaching profession, but briefly tell our viewers something more about you and your background. First of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Daniel, sir, uh, for bringing me onto the show so that we can talk about the importance of microgreens. A little bit about myself. My name is Nikhil Srinivasan. I'm 27 years old and I'm the first generation entrepreneur from my family. Uh, a family that has served in the armed forces for the last three generations. As sir has already mentioned, I used to be a teacher before. I have started my career out as a teacher and a life coach in entrepreneurship and leadership skills. And soon after that, I then proceeded to uh, venture into entrepreneurship myself to get a first-hand experience of how entrepreneurship is. Very <laughs> interesting, Nikhil, you know, a teacher turning into an entrepreneur himself. But how did this very idea of microgreens cultivation germinate in your mind? Oh, that's a very nice way to put this question, sir. Actually, uh, it uh, goes back to the year 2020 okay. when uh, there was a lockdown, as we all know, and the pandemic was a very testing and trying time for all of us. And uh, things were very uncertain. I was working from home at that time, as most people. And I had a lot of extra time on my hand. And there were also these growing concerns uh, as to you know, what this entire pandemic is about, how we're going to get our rations, the food supplies. So I started my own small research as to how we can grow food at home. And microgreens was actually one of the topics that I arrived at after a lot of research. And uh, I discovered this food that is one of the most nutritious foods on the planet. Okay, so, so this was basically the idea germinated basically by reading something about it, right? And yes, researching on it. Yes, by now uh, tell yeah. me, since this was a new territory to you, unknown territory to you, uh, were, were there any apprehensions in your mind before venturing into such a domain? Certainly, sir, there were uh, many apprehensions. Firstly, because I don't come from an entrepreneurial background. So that initial confidence was probably missing. But uh, all my knowledge about entrepreneurship was again in theory and probably a few books and a few TV shows that I had watched like Shark Tank. But uh, the thing about uh, how I overcame those risks and how I overcame that fear is simply by starting uh, the work and getting to work on the ground. So as I kept working, the path kept becoming clearer and that's how I proceeded to so, start. Can we say, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. It's something like that for you. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. So Nikhil, can you tell our viewers in down to earth layman's terms, what are microgreens and how different they are from the other greens 
that we are generally exposed to. Wow. Sir, uh, I will give you a very brief version first. So microgreens is basically maximum nutrition, minimum effort. That was a brief version. Now there is a lot of confusion between the term microgreens and sprouts. So let me also clear that out. Microgreens are not sprouts. Microgreens is the next level after the sprouting stage. So this is when the plant grows its first few leaves. These are called the true leaves. And once you see these true leaves appear and the plant is about the size of maybe four inches, that is when it's called a microgreen. And this microgreen is actually packed full of nutrients, antioxidants, and it contains all the nutrition that, it's, that the plant requires to grow into a fully grown mature plant. Okay, okay. So that was nice, <coughs> a very brief explanation to the point. But tell us, Nikhil, which vegetable varieties actually can be cultivated for this microgreen section? So there are over 200 vegetable varieties that can be cultivated for the growth of microgreens. Okay. But uh, with a lot of standard research, I can, I can name a few right away. So in your leafy green category, there is sunflower, there is mustard, and there is arugula. Then comes the root vegetables like beetroot, uh, like radish. Then you have your uh, brassicae family, which is broccoli, cabbage, kale, you can also make microgreens from sunflower, sunflower okay. shoots and pea shoots. Okay. And they're extremely nutritious and very delicious. You can easily add them into your daily recipes. Now, having told our viewers the various varieties of microgreens, yes, sir. how easy it is and how does one go about growing microgreens? Okay, so I will make this uh, for viewers who are interested in growing microgreens at home. I will tell you that growing microgreens is certainly possible at home. It, all you need is, a, is a, a certain bent of mind that you have to be slightly uh, maybe uh, research oriented. You need to have some patience and that's what it takes to grow microgreens. So I will tell you how to grow your own microgreen from scratch. To start with, I think you should start with a simpler variety like mustard. So mustard is a common kitchen ingredient and can be found uh, easily the, the mustard seed. seeds the, the mustard the black one. mustard seeds yes. so the first thing if you want to grow really good high quality microgreens is you have to qualify the seed whether the seed is good quality or not and there's this very simple test to do that which you can do at home uh, you just take the seed of mustard and you crush it within your fingers and the mustard should the mustard seed should release some oil you should then smell that seed uh, and you should get the strong mustard oil aroma once this is done, you know that these seeds are good quality and you can use them to grow microgreens. Next, what you need to do, you need to get a food grade plastic container and take out the lid from that container. You need to then slightly trim the edges of that lid and then place it onto the, onto the container such that it fits exactly within the brim of the container. Now what you, now what you want to do is take some potting soil and place it into the, into the container and fill it till the brim. After this, you take the lid that you have trimmed earlier and press it firmly against the, the, the container. What this does is it flattens the soil, creating an even surface for the seeds to be put. Now you need to take three teaspoons of mustard seeds and evenly disperse them across the surface of the container. After this, you take a misting bottle or a spray and gently spray onto the surface and to make sure that the seeds and the soil is uh, nice and moist. Post this, you take the lid that you had previ previously trimmed, place it on top of the container and then put, a, put one or two books on top of these, on top of the lid. Now you take this container and keep it in a cool dark place for about two days. Do not touch this for two days let it take its own sweet time to germinate. Once this is done, after two days, what you need to do is go and take out the lid. Once you take out the lid from this container, you will find that the microgreens have sprouted, they have also germinated, and their shoots have actually pushed up against the weight. Yeah. You have put a weight of about 500 grams on it, and it, the, the seeds have actually pushed up against the weight. This is a good sign that the microgreens are now ready to be placed in the light. So now you take off this lid and gently place this container 
by a windowsill that receives ample, uh, ample sunlight. Water this twice a day and on the second day your microgreens will be ready for harvest in full bloom. They will be green in color with their first two leaves. Take a sharp knife or a scissor and gently harvest at the base of the microgreens just above the soil level and keep them stored in an airtight container in the fridge or best consume right away fresh. Directly? Directly. You have to just wash or them. Or you can rinse use them, them as garnishings also. You can use them as garnishings. You can use them as smoothies. I would I would love to elaborate on this. Okay, fine. Yes, sir. No, uh, that was one part of it. Yeah. The actual yeah. process of cultivation of the seeds and yes. things like that for yes. germination. But is there any difference between the seeds? The other seeds, different microgreen seeds are different from the normal variety of seeds that we get in the market for vegetables? Actually, like I, I said in the in the previous statement, Microgreen seeds are basically your vegetable seeds, but you want to make sure that they're high quality seeds. Yeah, the quality and, of them. And the reason why is because when you are planting a regular vegetable plant, you take maybe at max one or two seeds, maybe five seeds, yes. put them in a pot and then you wait for that to sprout, germinate and become a fully grown plant. In the case of microgreens, when you take a container just this big, the box that I was talking about, the food grade box, you need to put at least 15,000 seeds in there. Okay. And these 15,000 seeds will give you the, the lush microgreens. Lush, rich. Rich microgreens. So you need, you need to make sure you're using high quality mm -hmm. seeds. Mm -hmm. That is the only thing to keep in mind. But uh, as far as uh, vegetable seeds go, you can definitely just go to your local nursery and find high quality vegetable seeds to start your microgreens with. Now, uh, talking about the cultivation, I have another question for you. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, can a person venture into this activity commercially and grow uh, microgreens in an open field or do you need a temperature controlled kind of nurseries for this, this segment of agriculture? Certainly you can venture into this field and you know grow it in nurseries but the conditions must be favorable. For example, the optimal conditions for growing microgreens is actually between 22 degrees to 24 degrees Celsius okay. and the, the humidity must be within 50 percent. Now if you are located in places like Pune or Bangalore or uh, any dry climate places with uh, reasonably cooler temperatures, you can definitely grow microgreens in a nursery outside. However, in places like Goa, which is maybe a, a slightly more trop uh, tropical yeah, climate, tropical it's, uh, it's, yes. uh, it's a bit hot here and uh, the humidity also is a bit high. Yes, it's very high being a you so know, coastal, coastal in, in such area. places, especially if you're a commercial grower and you want to ensure that quality of produce 365 days a year, you want to get that consistency, okay. then I would definitely recommend going in for a controlled environment agriculture or a controlled environment nursery where you can uh, regulate factors like temperature, humidity and other beneficial factors that will require that are required for the precision farming. Okay. Having spoken so much about this preparatory process yes, about uh, the cultivation, germinate, planting and things like that, uh, could you tell our viewers what actually are the health benefits of consuming microgreens? Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, by now, I think most viewers have read maybe one or two articles about microgreens for sure in the news. But there are certainly many health benefits and the range of health benefits are huge. Uh, primarily because microgreens are rich in antioxidants. They have over 22 varieties of antioxidants in, within them and the health benefits range from balancing hormonal changes in the body to improved digestive processes, to improved cognitive functions, to improved motor skills and also in certain cases slows down the aging process. Oh, I see. And this is simply because of the antioxidants flushing out the oxidative stress in your body. So, uh, though they are micros, the health benefits are huge, I should Absolutely. say. Absolutely. Am I right? Absolutely. And it's I don't phenomenal. Think most of the people know about this particular factor of its health benefits. Yes. yes. Now, uh, coming to microgreens again, uh, how do we incorporate this? Can they be incorporated easily in our day to day meals and recipes? How easy is it? In fact, I will just give you an example from last night. I had microgreens in with my dinner. So I will just tell you how I incorporated it in my meal. Uh, okay. I took that would be interesting. That, yeah, exactly. Because it's the first thing that comes to, to my mind when you just mentioned this. Uh, so last night I had uh, 
marinated some chicken pieces okay. and I kept them in the fridge. And uh, when I came back from work, I just took it out from the fridge and let it thaw for a while, put that into the air fryer for about 10 minutes. In the meanwhile, I had a box of freshly harvested mustard microgreens with mm -hmm. me. In the meanwhile, I had a box of freshly harvested mustard microgreens with me. So I took this out from the fridge, gave it a nice rinse, strained it in a strainer, and then just took the air fried chicken from the air fryer and had it with a side of microgreens. It has immensely beautiful flavors and it's rich in nutrients and also a great way to get that fiber in your diet. Uh, Nikhil, it sounds very, not only interesting, but very tempting. You have aroused my taste buds, in fact. Definitely. <laughs> I, I, would, I would love to bring samples for everyone. Uh, here. Uh, can you list on some of the success stories of people, you know, who have included these microgreens in their day-to-day -day diet? Certainly, Do you have sir. any stories to tell us about of it? Of course, of yeah? course. Uh, I have been doing this for the last three years and I've, I've, I have the privilege to be a part of some inspiring success stories. Okay. We have athletes, we have supermodels who are using our products as microgreen smoothies and they are crazy about these microgreen smoothies because it helps them get you know great energy levels through their training, their gym sessions. Yeah. And also, once they're done with training, their recovery periods are much faster thanks to the you know, antioxidant properties present in the microgreens. Then we also have people who are on the famous keto diet and we also have vegans who are always looking for many more options of flavors, of nutrition, of choice. So we have a range of microgreens that they are really enjoying. People on, yeah. So this is a good food supplement in other words, am I, am I right? It's not only a food supplement, it can actually become a major component of diets. Of your diet. Yeah, sir. Now, uh, considering all these things, health benefits and goans are becoming more and more health conscious of late, uh, not only the youngsters, but you know, middle-aged and the elderly also. Everybody wants to live a healthy life, am I right? So, uh, how, which are the most common varieties of microgreens that actually can be grown in Goa, considering we have a tropical climate setup? Goa actually has, like you rightly said, a very tropical, typical tropical climate, which is indicative of things like high temperature and high humidity. Now, there are certain durable varieties that can easily be grown in these climates as well. So, some of them are sunflower, rocket arugula, your radish, any radish variety of microgreens can easily be grown. Pea shoots, pea shoots is also a wonderful variety that can be grown in such climatic conditions. What are these pea shoots? Pea shoots are your regular peas, your green okay, peas. Okay. If you just leave them to sprout for a while and then you place them in a soil container and you let them germinate and become microgreens, those are pea shoot microgreens. Okay. And they have a very sweet, earthy, tender taste. Okay, uh, now talking on a larger scale as far as microgreens <laughs> are concerned, uh, can this activity of going into microgreens farming actually generate any job opportunities and it, how it it uh, there are there are phenomenal opportunities that are, that are going to be coming up for people who are looking for different jobs and who are bored of doing the same old uh, mainstream jobs uh, microgreen farming actually is a type of urban farming so typically we're located within the cities as opposed to uh, having farms outside the city uh, we have jobs for people like uh, we have cre we have jobs for creative administrators, we have jobs for engineers, we have jobs for uh, people who want to pick up hands-on skills. So you can literally walk into our facility, and we will give you the training required, and you will get a very decent job from this skills that you have learned. I see. Yeah. Now. Uh you said there are a lot of uh, job opportunities yes, sir. in various uh, you know, kinds. Now, what I want to ask you is that, supposing, say, someone wants to venture into this, after he hears this interesting discussion on microgreens, can you tell us and our viewers, before venturing into this kind of an activity, what are the risk factors that are, in, that are actually involved in this delicate farming activity and how does one overcome this if at all is faced with that as you rightly mentioned it's a very delicate activity of cultivation of microgreens it's a very sensitive crop because after all you're dealing with so many seed varieties you're dealing with such delicate plants so when it comes to the risk factors in microgreen farming 
something to consider would be the location where mm -hmm. you're located. You must uh, see that you are able to regulate certain temperatures. Otherwise, you are living in a place where the temperatures and the, the climate is suitable. Next is you need to follow certain set operating procedures or standard operating procedures okay. to ensure that your product is safe and is good quality before it goes to the market. Uh, okay, uh, Nikhil, now coming back to the consumption of you know microgreens. Yes. And uh, considering people are, as I said in the beginning, that people are becoming more and more health conscious. They want to live a healthy life, you know, without the support of medicines, whatever they may be. And uh, when it comes to eating microgreen and talking about, you know, sustainable eating practice, uh, do you think microgreens has a bright future and a major role to play in the years to come as far as the common man's diet is concerned? Certainly, sir. At Tridente Farms, we've had, you know, the privilege of seeing firsthand people using wheatgrass. Wheatgrass is actually a microgreen and it's been widely adapted by a lot of Indians for their health benefits and the antioxidant properties. Now let me tell you that just like wheatgrass, there are other range of microgreens out there with equally good or maybe even more nutritious benefits out there. So definitely microgreens is going to be a part of sustainable eating in the future simply because it's so simple to add into your diet and it's so full of nutrients. Uh, Nikhil, it's uh, very interesting to know so many, you know, benefits about this tiny and miniature plant, the microgreen you're talking about. Yes, sir. But uh, as, we, as we are saying, you were talking about commercial activities and things like that. Are there any government schemes at the moment to support this branch of agriculture in Goa on a larger scale? I think the Indian government is doing a fantastic job when it comes to providing certain schemes that are helpful to people who are getting into this kind of uh, farming activities. Uh, some of my favorites I will just discuss with you. There is the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana, okay. which is basically a facility that uh, allows you to insure your crops against crop loss yeah. because of certain unavoidable things like you know, weather changes, crop damage. There are many factors. Then there is a, another very beautiful facility that they have designed called the Electronic National Agriculture Market, which is basically, I think, a byproduct of Digital India. So what this uh, Electronic uh, National Agriculture Market is about is where all the growers and farmers from across the country can actually network and uh, better their supply chain, where your seeds are coming from, where you can supply your produce to. So I think these are some uh, amazing new facets with the Digital India campaign that's coming up. Okay. And okay. I'm excited to see what else is going to come in the field of agriculture. Well, uh, Nikhil, having uh, said all these things, uh, do you think that uh, there is a scope for you to begin with, uh, for getting a market besides the local market beyond Goa and beyond, uh, beyond India? Have you any time... Uh, found yourself you know looking at this kind of an opportunity certainly sir actually i did a fair share of research before starting out because this is my first venture after all and i wanted to keep the risks very calculated okay the microgreen growth rate in the world right now is at a 7.5 percent that is the cumulative annual growth rate and india is actually one of the fastest adopters of superfood and nutritious foods they're always looking for something better to better our health, to better okay. our yes. children's health, to better our family's yes. health. So definitely, uh, I have also seen a fair share of success in the Bangalore market. I have supplied to the Star Hotels there. We have had direct subscribers uh, subscribing us from uh, you I know see. from online, and I'm very excited to see what Goa brings to us. I, I get a very good feeling from Goa, and looking forward to it. Uh, uh, okay. Besides doing this, have you any time given it the thought that you should go out to? you know, kind of some institutions or some colleges bringing about this awareness among the younger generation. Because uh, I also see a lot of future into this kind of activity. Certainly, Have you given sir. this a thought? Certainly, sir. Actually, one of the core components of our company is educating our clients and we have ample research material that we can share with you. We all, I also make it a point to go and interact directly with different groups of people, different demographics of age groups. Recently, we did, we did a, I did a 
an event at my own house okay. for a group called Food Express by the Vasco Watch. They're a group of very nice ladies who uh, meet from time to time to discuss about their food habits and their recipes. So we, I actually did some microgreen recipes along with my, I involved my family in this okay. and we made some yummy microgreen foods uh, for them. Uh, I'm also, I will soon be giving a lecture at a, at a college soon. Somebody has approached me for that. And, Very uh, nice. And I'm always game for talking about microgreens because this is literally what my life is about uh, and has been for the last three years. So I'm always ready for a conversation about microgreens. And one last question. We are run out of time. <coughs> sure. Uh, having, you know, taken a leap forward in a totally unknown territory, yeah. changing your profession from a teacher yeah. uh, that's yes. to at a high profile school. Yes. Are you happy with what you are doing now? I am. And I'm more than happy. Okay. <laughs> I'm more than happy and uh, there's lots of learnings, there's lots of adventure and for a young person like me, I think there's lots of energy. We love to meet new people, a lot of new networking, a lot of new learning, a lot of new growth. So definitely I'm very happy where I am right now. You look happy and you, you, <laughs> there, there seems to be so much of energy in you. It's, it was lovely having you it at was, our studios, Nikhil. It was, it was a great and pleasure. This was a here, great sir. discussion, I should say. Thank you. Thank you, So, uh, here was Nikhil, Nikhil Srinivasan. And Nikhil has given us so much information about microgreens, something that you and I did not know. And I'm sure you are already inspired by this, uh, all that information that Nikhil has given us. So if you think you have that green fingers and a little passion, you can change the look of your kitchen garden with microgreens and make your friends turn green with envy. Do it. Keep watching your favorite channel, the CCR TV channel and this program in conversation with. Thank you.